Hey everybody, it's your boy Adjective Noun here and killing zombies, saving the president's daughter and using a bunch of green herb? <laughs> Sounds to me like a perfect video game. Well, I, I, I know it's a perfect video game. I, I've played it 324 times across six different platforms, so yeah. Drank beer, liked beer, still like beer. Thanks for stopping by for another episode of Rebels Retrospectives where I take a look back at an older game and take off the rose-tinted glasses. Put on the rose-tinted glasses? One of those. And for today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look back at one of my favorite games ever, for Resident Evil. Wait a second, that can't be right. But that's, why would, who would've? No, there's only one way to settle this. Huh. Well, fuck. For Resident Evil, or as it's more commonly misreferred to as Resident Evil 4, is not even the fourth installment into the Resident Evil series. Even excluding spin-off titles, you had Code Veronica and Resident Evil Zero, which both preceded RE4. However, RE4 was the first mainline Resident Evil game that featured a non-fixed third-person over-the-shoulder camera. Cause let's face it, who doesn't want to stare at Leon Kennedy's ass for hours on end? Not only was it the first Resident Evil with a new camera style, it was also the first Resident Evil game to come out exclusively on a Nintendo console. Exclusively. For the very, very long time of nine months. Since then, it's come out on the PS2, PC, Wii, PS3, 360, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. It's also on Apple and Android, and also something called a Zebo. What the hell's a Zebo? Yeah, this game released for a Brazilian console four years after its initial release. And despite being an entire four years later, it looks like this. Yeah, I honestly didn't know about it, and I'm hoping that's all the research I have to do for this video, because I've played this game over a hundred times. So I know, I know this game. And the story of Resident Evil 4 goes a little bit like this. Shortly after the events of Resident Evil 2 in Raccoon City, we follow ex-police officer, now U.S. Special Agent Leon Scott Kennedy and his incredibly fashionable hairstyle as he's sent to the rural Spanish countryside to rescue daughter of the President of the U.S., Ashley Graham. And no, there is not a real president named Graham. I checked. Shortly following the worst Uber ride in history, we break and enter into a random villager's house, forcing him to resort to self-defense to stop an intruder. And being a foreigner who doesn't speak the language, it's only natural that we... shoot him in the face. But don't worry, everyone here wants to kill us, and they killed our Uber drivers, so now we're stuck here. And following what may be the most intense opening battle, we're greeted with what may be the best line delivered in any media ever. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Amazing. Simply amazing. And it's only slightly better than some of the other lines spoken throughout the game. <sighs> Women. Huh. Video game writers. So one quick time event later and we trek on to find Ashley and instead meet the best character in the game. Me llamo Luis Serra. So one quick time event later and we trek on to find Ashley and instead meet the second best character of the game. Over here, stranger. Yes, the merchant. With such classics as... What are you buying? And... What are you selling? And who could forget... I'll buy it at a high price. Also, we were injected with some purple thing. So we learned that a religious cult called Los Illuminados, or the Illuminati, kidnapped Ashley and have her at the church. So we get to the church and can't get in. So one quick time event later and we trek on to find Ashley. You know, I'm starting to notice a pattern here. So we fight a fish monster. Not like that. Find the key to the church, fight a land monster, and then save Ashley. Don't come! <laughs> If I had a dollar for every time I heard that. And demonetized. We are then introduced to the main villain of the game, Darth Sidious. Turns out they're holding Ashley for ransom. Originality. We escape, run into Luis again. Prince equipped his daughter with ballistics. Choose between two boss battles. The correct answer is both, by the way. You fight the village chief, who can do this. <laughs> Steal his eyeball and flee the village. And the first time I played this game, I was not expecting it, but you end up right at the gates of a medieval castle. <laughs> what is this? Resident medieval? So we make our way into the castle. 
Yeah, I'm sure they won't mind. We run into Luis again. He's better with the ladies, I'm sure. Then meet the second in command, Batty. Me llamo Ramon Salazar. Fight a blind Wolverine. Lose Ashley. Well, shit. We then make our way through the castle to find Ashley. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. Some funny lines along the way were, That should keep me company, cause boredom kills me. And get off my back, old man. <gasps> Do you like my garden? We run into a femme fatale. Ada. Watch Luis die. Luis! Luis! I'm pretty sure his name is Luis, but yeah, Luis, close, close enough. So in order to save the Ashley, first we must become the Ashley, and then we lose the Ashley. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. We almost save Ashley, fall down a hole, continue to hear what past is writing in 2005. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Fight one of the scariest bosses. No, I mean, he is pretty easy if you just use a rocket launcher. What? What? It's the one that you just find in the castle. Why would the game put it in front of me to use if they didn't want me to use it? One incredibly long quick time event later and we take on Salazar himself, who in typical Resident Evil fashion can do this. One. Okay. Later, actually one more. Women. And now we're in stage three, the island. You know when I first played this game and it kept going on and on? It was so amazing because I didn't want it to end. Now that I'm playing through it for gameplay, I'm starting to wonder. Why the hell is this game so long? So on the island, we run into the regenerators. My whole playthrough so far not invoking any fear until I got to this hallway. Also, I'm gonna point out that I legitimately did not know that they could speed walk, which... Yeah, that's fine. I didn't ever need to sleep again. So we rescue Ashley again. No way, Leon. Way. <gasps> I'm sorry, did this game come out in the 90s? So having Ashley back, I swear to God, if we lose her again, I'm gonna- <laughs> This bit. Also, why is <laughs> everyone's response to Ada? <laughs> One giant quick time event later and- All for Umbrella's sake. Almost let it slip. Almost? Yeah, okay. One giant boss battle later. <laughs> Another giant boss battle later. Witness the power! And then we're introduced to the real best character, Chopper Mike. Sorry, bad traffic. I'll cover you. One giant horde of enemies later. Yeah, hey, I know a good boss. Man, I really like this guy. <laughs> what? No, no, not Mike. Not Chopper Mike. Mike! We then save Ashley, run into Emperor Palpatine again, who can do this. Cause it's Resident Evil. Then we cure ourselves with this machine the bad guys have, cause of course they do. We take on the head honcho himself. Ada blows up the island, and we jet ski our way to safety. Followed by this dialogue. So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, um, overtime? <laughs> Sorry. Which I guess is fine, but then there's this dialogue. You know, you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. May I remind you that you're still on duty. Y yeah so the the story the story holds up the dialogue on the other hand is straight garb and after that you unlock separate ways in assignment ada both mini campaigns where you play as ada you can also load your old save and play a new game with all your weapons and ammo carrying over or play the newly unlocked professional mode to truly test your Insanity. Yeah, this game has a bunch of stuff to do. And being that the story is just about 16 hours, beating the game and purchasing the Infinite Launcher or Chicago Typewriter is actually something that's really fun to do. I would know. I've done it over 50 times. So this drug addiction of a video game started on the GameCube, where a friend lent me the game in which I proceeded to play it repeatedly. I played it on PS2 a couple times a couple years later on another borrowed game, purchased my own copy on the Wii, got it on the PS3 a little later to be able to play it without motion gyro controls. Their gyro controls are better. Then again on the PS4 because my PS3 went to console heaven, and then the most recent time being on the Switch. For portability? 
I mean, honestly, by the time I got it for the PS3, it was basically a high-stakes poker game between me and Capcom, where they just kept raising. And Mama didn't raise no bit. And while that's not what Mama raised, that's exactly what this game turned me into. Over and over. Repeatedly. Probably until my 7th or 8th playthrough. I mean, even on my 3rd or 4th playthrough when I unlocked the Chicago Typewriter, a weapon with SMG speed, shotgun damage, and infinite ammo, I'd still get caught by surprise by an enemy that was off screen, or turn a corner too fast running straight into an enemy. And until I felt like I knew the enemy spawns, this game would legitimately cause me to jump and scream in fear. And that that does make sense, being I was 16 and this is a horror game. Yes, it is more of an action horror game than a survival horror game like its predecessors. And because of that, it seems more scary themed than it is actually scary. Sure, there are the scares that come from being attacked from off screen, the fear of the unknown for first time players. Me being 16, home alone with the sun down playing it for a total of about two minutes before I shut it off and turned every single light in my house on. Yeah, it's a little scary. But the three things that always gave me fear in this game were anyone with a chainsaw, the eyes sewn shut wolverines, and the regenerators. And don't forget the spiky regenerators. Dying to them was always... Cool. And it wasn't just seeing them that struck fear into the very depths of my soul. It was the sounds they made. I mean, just listen to the sounds the regenerators make. <laughs> So besides a few select enemies, the fear of the unknown, and getting attacked by a snake in a box, there's a snake in that box. This game is more of an action horror game than a horror game. And being that it's a horror light, how's the action? Yes it is! Yeah, what this game lacks in fear, it makes up for in the new style of combat. Ammo is plentiful as compared to earlier titles, but that doesn't mean you won't run out of certain weapons ammo from time to time. And while past games had the intensity and tension that came with struggling with minimal ammo, ammo to drop the zombie engine closer and closer, this game draws that intensity and tension by giving you more ammo, but also by putting 10 enemies right in front of you, literally at a sprint. So the main thing to do in this game is keep moving. If you stand still for too long, you never know when someone's going to be right behind you about to end this whole guy's career. And because of that need to keep moving, the controls in this game are... Oddly amazing. Now I know how much flack this game gets for its outdated controls that have only been altered once for the Wii, but I do honestly believe that they fit the game so well. Only being able to aim and fire while standing still is a bad idea and would be terrible in any other franchise. But Resident Evil 4 wouldn't be Resident Evil 4 if it didn't control the way that it does. I will admit that playing it with gyro controls is the best way to play, and the Switch, despite having gyro controls in the Joy-Cons, doesn't have have the gyro function. And while yes, Capcom could have gone out of their way to add the gyro functions, this is still a 15 year old game. I bet they only keep porting this game because they assume everybody just wants to own it on every single console that they own. Which I mean... They're not wrong. So besides the combat being pretty old by today's standards, the game had a decent amount of weapons at the time. And with most of them being upgradable, this made for many options and builds each playthrough. And I'd just like to point out that without any outside influence, I created a perfect square in the inventory menu with the best weapons and the best attachments. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so awesome. Yeah, even the inventory screen in this game is fun. Maneuvering ammo, weapons, and healing items around to free up space to help quell your OCD was always fun. Plus, when you combine the green dream with the Maui Wowie and the fire OG, well wham bam, thank you ma'am, you got yourself some Peruvian instant dankness powder. A real money spin of that one. I tried really hard, but I couldn't think of a segue into enemy. The enemies in this game are amazing. From the main villains like Sadler and Salazar, to the multitude of bosses, all the way down to the Ganados. These infected humans range from farmers to medieval... monks? To armed combatants. All with amazing lines such as... I stop! The boy has said the three different Plagas variants were awesome, each making you adapt in a different way to the situation. The invisible flying insects and the terrifying noises they make. 
The El Gigantes aren't that tough till you have to fight two at once. And the Blind Wolverines aren't that hard until you have to fight two at once. And you could fight them without four Ganados spawning in if you just stay in this little tiny bottom area. Yeah, I'm insane. The Chainsaw Boss seems tough till you have to fight the two sisters at once or have them jump into your minecart as you're minecarting through a mine. The Lake Monster might be the most unique boss battle in this whole game. Salazar's right hand, who I cheese through every time, has the most suspenseful moments leading up to his fight. Salazar himself, which reminds me the most of older Resident Evil bosses, and Krauser, who you'd think due to the dialogue would have an explained backstory. Nope! The two-parter of the boss known as It is another great boss battle. And for some reason, Sadler's boss battle just wasn't that cool of a final boss fight. I actually like fighting him as Ada more than I do as Leon. I know I thought this about other games, but the final boss might be my least favorite. So unless I'm forgetting anything, this game still holds up. All in all, it is still one of my favorite games ever. And whether I want to play it on the Wii and dig my Wii out of the shed, which... No, I could play it on PS4, like I did to capture all this gameplay, or I can play it on the Switch wherever I am. And a few weeks ago, the power went out in my house at night, and I was able to play Resi 4 right there in bed. And I wasn't even scared. Cause I'm a big boy. And that's gonna wrap this one up. Yes, 4 Resident Evil is one of my favorite games ever. But let me know down below, what do you think about this game? Have you played it recently? How many consoles do you own it on or have played it on? Let me know down below. Hit F to pay respects for Chopper Man Mike. And while you're down there, smash that like button, hit the sub, -sub button, gently tap that notification bell. And most importantly, I wanted to thank all of you that watched this. Thank you very much. I enjoy putting a lot of effort into these videos, into the retrospective videos. And it means a lot when people enjoy something that I enjoy creating so much. It is really awesome. And also, I just wanted to point out Resident Evil 4, RE4, RE4, like reefer because of the green herb.